What's going on guys? Sam Adams here and welcome back to another episode of The Drop, the weekly series where I go over the hottest games that are coming out on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, Switch, whatever it may be on a week-to-week -week basis. And this week is a jam-packed week. We've got some really awesome games coming out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. To kick things off this week, we have Detroit Become Human coming out on the PlayStation 4, a gripping narrative mankind rediscovered. Travel to the near future metropolis of Detroit, a city rejuvenated by an exciting technological development, androids. Witness your brave new world turn to chaos as you take on the role of Kara, a female android trying to find her own place in a turbulent social landscape. Shape an ambitious branching narrative, making choices that will not only determine your own fate, but that of the entire city. Discover what it means to be human from the perspective of an outsider. See the world of man through the eyes of machine. The the way this game is being promoted by PlayStation is that it's the next big PlayStation 4 exclusive. It's one of those games that you can only get in the PlayStation ecosystem, and it certainly does look good. I will give them that. Uh, overall, the idea of the game is that you play as an android, and it's kind of like approaching the ideas of racism without directly addressing racism. It's kind of like the humans don't like the androids, the androids are becoming sentient and don't really like the humans, and it's one of those things where everybody just wants to be on the same level playing field. And I feel like in our current political and social climate, that this game very well uh, could have a deeper social impact than we do realize. When it comes to the gameplay of something like this, it very much so is dependent on your choice. Your choices and selections in the game actually matter and change the outcome of where the narrative ends up going. Uh, so, of course, needless to say, it is a very story-driven experience. If you are not somebody uh, that enjoys a deep single-player campaign-esque kind of thing, like you would get from maybe a Telltale game, uh, then you might want to give this one a pass. But, if you do get heavily invested in characters, if you do like the fact that your choices have an impact on the way the game plays out, uh, then you might want to check out Detroit Become Human, or at least give it a rant, see if it's your kind of thing, when it comes out on the PlayStation 4 later on this week. Next up, we have Bloodstained Curse of the Moon coming out on the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, the Switch, the PC, and the PlayStation Vita. Battle with swords and whips in this retro-style action game brought to you by game creator Koji Igarashi and NT Creates. Play as Zangetsu, a demon slayer bearing a deep grudge who must travel through perilous lands to defeat a powerful demon lurking in the Dark Castle. Zangetsu will meet with fellow travelers along the way who can join your journey as playable characters. Switching to these characters with their unique abilities will unlock new paths through treacherous stages. Your choices in recruiting these adventures will change the difficulty of the game and may even affect the ending. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon is the 8-bit style game promised as a stretch goal of the 2015 Kickstarter campaign for Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which is, in fact, coming out later in 2018. This is a game that no one really thought would come out in 2018. I didn't hear anything about this game until just a couple of weeks back, but everybody is very excited about it, and I feel like that's because it wasn't announced until a couple of weeks ago. It's very much so your classic kind of Metroidvania 8-bit experience. Uh, really, really cool stuff. So, because they hit that stretch goal in the 2015 Kickstarter. Now we have this game, and then of course Ritual of the Night is coming out later in 2018. But as far as this game goes, uh, it's going to be a budget title. It's going to be one of those games where you get a good bit of enjoyment out of it without having to break the bank by paying 60 bucks or whatever. Uh, so if you want to get hyped up for Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, if you want to just play a classic 8-bit style game, then by all means dive in to Bloodstained Curse of the Moon when it comes out on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, Vita, and the PC later on this week. Next up, we have. State of Decay 2 coming out on the Xbox One and the PC, although this game did come out technically last Friday if you did buy a specific edition of the game, but the majority of players are going to get access to it later on this week. How will you survive? The dead have risen and civilization has fallen, not even the military could stop the zombies, and now it's up to you to gather survivors and build a community with your friends in a post-apocalyptic world, a world where every decision matters and where you define what it means to survive. Your choices define your survival story. Four-player multiplayer co-op, build your community and invite up to three friends to survive in an open world filled with zombies. RPG progression, it's up to you to establish a base, develop your character's abilities, and manage your resources to survive as a group in this post-apocalyptic world. Choices matter, every decision has lasting consequences. In the end, how you survive might surprise you, and the game is Xbox One X enhanced. Higher resolution, steadier frame rates, improved details, and better effects all come with the experience on the Xbox One X. Or the PC, for that matter, you could also get that on the PC. So, State of Decay 2 is, as you would expect, the sequel to the original State of Decay that was released on the Xbox 360 and the PC, with it later coming to the Xbox One. And uh, overall, this game is improving on what the original brought to the table, but it certainly doesn't seem like it's hitting fans' expectations. Uh, of what I've heard, the game is kind of dull. Of what I've heard, the game can get very boring and repetitive. Uh, but I will say, of the gameplay that I've watched and the streams that I've tuned into, uh, it does look very pretty. It seems like if you have friends to play, 
with, then this is going to be a much more appealing experience as compared to playing it solo. Uh, so if you are into something that is very co-op heavy, in a sense, then I would recommend playing this. I've seen comparisons drawn to Sea of Thieves, where of course you could play the game solo and you could get some enjoyment out of it, but really Sea of Thieves was about what experiences you could make with your friends, not necessarily what was in the game itself. So if you want to grab three buddies and wander around in the world of State of Decay, then you can check out State of Decay 2, which is coming out on the Xbox One and the PC later on this week. Next up, we've got Dark Souls Remastered coming out on the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and the PC. Then there was Fire, re-experience the critically acclaimed genre-defining game that started it all. Beautifully remastered Return to Lordran in a stunning high-definition detail running at 60 frames per second. Dark Souls Remastered includes the main game plus the Artorius of the Abyss DLC. All four platforms will have dedicated servers. With this game, I've heard some fantastic things. I've heard that all of the bugs from the original game have been squashed. I have heard that the servers are supposed to be much more stable with the advent of dedicated servers. Uh, overall, this is the best version of Dark Souls to date. It looks beautiful, it runs beautifully, and it includes all of the DLC to boot. So if you want to dive back into the original Dark Souls, or if you want to dive in for the first time, uh, then you can check out Dark Souls Remastered, which is coming out this week on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, and will be coming to the Nintendo Switch at a later date. And our final big game of the week, we have Pixel Junk Monsters 2 coming out on the PlayStation 4, the Switch, and the PC. The spirit of the forest, Tiki Man, is in trouble. An army of mysterious monsters has invaded his peaceful forest. Repel the fire and fury of your assaulting foes, build towers within the woods, and level them up to vanquish the invaders. Protect the chibis, the future of the Tiki tribe. The original Pixel Junk Monsters was released 11 years ago in December of 2007 and has come to the PlayStation 3, the PlayStation Portable, the Vita, and the PC. Uh, and I've spent the majority of my time in the game on the PlayStation Portable version of the game, and I will say uh, that it is a very awesome game. The gameplay is very satisfying. It's very much so your kind of classic tower defense style game, uh, but the art style is really where the game shines, and I feel like that is all being carried over into Pixel Junk Monsters 2, uh, because the art style is definitely what sets this game apart from its competitors. Uh, it very much so looks like a claymation, and it looks like it plays like a claymation kind of game. Uh, cool looking art style, and I will say that the gameplay tweaks and changes that I've seen in two are going to make it a much more engaging and uh, and kind of immersive world overall as compared to the top-down kind of tower defense that we got from the original pixel junk monsters so if you liked the original pixel junk monsters if you are in the mood for a tower defense game then I would highly recommend checking out pixel junk monsters 2 it's coming out at a budget-friendly price and it's going to be available on the PlayStation 4 the switch and the PC and I think this game is going to do very very well on the switch just because of how colorful and bright and happy the world is but I digress I'll be playing it on the PC PS4 more than likely. And to wrap things up, some honorable mentions. We have Elder Scrolls Online Somerset coming out on the PC. H1Z1 Battle Royale is coming out on the PlayStation 4. Runner 3 is coming out on the PC and the Nintendo Switch, the game that features cameos from a lot of different genres and also the voice of Mario himself. Uh, and finally, Mega Man Legacy Collections 1 and 2 are finally coming to the Nintendo Switch. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of The Drop. If you did, drop me a like down below and let me know what you think about the games that are coming out this week. Does anything strike your fancy? Are you a big fan of Pixel Junk Monsters. Do you want to see what's going on with 2? Have you been dying, no pun intended, to play State of Decay? Uh, have you been looking forward to Bloodstained Curse of the Moon? Or is Detroit Become Human your next big game? Let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, I do upload new stuff throughout the week and I do a live morning show every single weekday morning right here at 7 a.m. Eastern Time if you want to come by and check out the hottest gaming news of the day. But as for right now, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this particular video. I will talk to you soon. Peace.